so in the security industry, um, there are these big concerns about cybersecurity, hacking, using devices for malicious intent. Um, I see as an outsider, not an IT person, um, and not a hands-on security person, right? I'm kind of on the perimeter, and I see this grid of personal hacking problems and corporate and government hacking problems. They're, they're very different than each other. Some people are caught up in hacking, right? Maybe my data gets stolen because a company was hacked. Um, or perhaps I'm somebody famous and my, my, I'm, I'm targeted. And the same thing happens on the government and security side, right? They could just get caught up in something and uh, it, it's a problem for their business or, or for their organization, or they could be targeted. And when that targeting happens, now we have two problems, right? Um, I see it as uh, data security. So let's say it's a video surveillance system. Um, what if that surveillance system is compromised, right? I could um, allow my data out into the world, or perhaps um, somebody could take my security system down and use that timing to infiltrate my facility, right? The other side of it is maybe perhaps what IT pros are worried about, which is using the video system as a bridge into their network, right? So um, I can use a vulnerability in a camera or in a VMS or, or anything like that and get into their, to their network. So that's how I see it from my perspective. You've set up all this equipment, you've spent the day, um, as we say, rolling up your sleeves and getting ready for all of us to come into this class. So why is it that, that you and Bosch have put this class together? What, what is the landscape that you see from a security professional's perspective? I think one of the biggest threats to um, IP video right now is the fact that a lot of products on, in the market are um, typically have an open uh, source or o open Linux kernel operating system on them. And you kind of alluded to the fact that someone could use the video system to bridge into a, a functioning network. Mm -hmm. One of the things that most people don't realize is that cameras can be actually weaponized. So one of the things that I could do if I mount a uh, open Linux kernel device, I can load my own malware and then use that as an actual attack platform. And you know, one of the things we point out in the class, where's the last place that you were able to pick up antivirus software for your cameras? You can't. So the, the focus of this class is teaching awareness, um, how to harden your systems, how to reduce your attack surface, and it's also to teach uh, the technicians out there the difference between a vulnerability scan and a penetration test because a lot of the uh, <clears throat> hot button words out there right now, I've had a lot of customers come to me and say, you know, I just paid $10,000 for a pen test and it took them a day and they found this. You don't do a penetration test in a day. That's a vulnerability scan. And a vulnerability scan, just because you find a vulnerability doesn't mean it's actually a leverageable vulnerability. So that's one of the things we teach in class, how to harden your systems, uh, how to implement certificates, how to you know, utilize different protocols to uh, confirm your authentication, communicate to your NVRs, your VRMs, your iSCSIs, and just lock down your systems. So it sounds like this class is going beyond awareness of cyber vulnerability perhaps more intended towards taking an installer, an integrator, who's going to be working on a system and educating them on things that IT pros already know about. Yes, and we're also looking, at, so in, in the class there's a ton of hands-on. Uh, we, we, we do the basics of um, Wireshark, we do SNMP Walk, we do um, just a ton of different applications. We're going to use Nexpose by Rapid7, we're going to teach them how to actually do vulnerability scans, but we also teach them the legal perspectives of that so that when they're installing a system, if they want to make sure that the system that they installed is actually hardened and, or the attack surface has been reduced, then they know how to establish with the customer what's in scope and what's not in scope so that they're not uh, interfering with anything on the production network. They don't take a server down by accident, <laughs> s stuff like that. So really what we're doing is we're getting IT pros and security pros on the same page, speaking the same language, working in unison with each other um, so that we don't 
create a problem um, for something that IT was already working on. Yeah. Or create a vulnerability that IT wasn't aware could be a vulnerability. Exactly. I.e. introducing a camera or another device that's perhaps not as um, uh, cyber resilient as, as another one might be. Yes. Okay. The, the, and one of the things we, we, we try to, um, we try to um, establish in their mindsets is that there's a difference between um, a fighter jet and a one of those little one prop one seater planes. You can get um, you can get a, a Porsche that has a lot of features or an F-16. It's got a lot of features, does a lot of stuff. The more moving parts you have and the more features you have, the more vulnerabilities it may have. If it's sort of the difference between a high-end laptop and a, a Chromebook. There's no real operating system on a Chromebook. It's a web browser, right? Okay. So we, we also want to instill that they know how to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Because I, I, what, what I get a lot of the times is uh, I, you know, we'll, we'll get this little, you know, tiny little device somebody made, and it's really just a blank lens with a CCD or a CMOS in it, and it's transmitting video and that's it. There's no other security features to it. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to balance out what you're dealing with. And So if you want a feature rich camera, which most people do, right? They want high resolution. They want different ways to be able to stream video out of it. They want ways to um, interface to it and stream the video out to a VMS <coughs> or to a web browser. Mm -hmm. um, a, a iPhone, that all these require different yeah. protocols. Utilize certificates. Sure, uh, a TPM module, right? So all of those, uh, if you want to call it bells and whistles, functionalities, come at a risk. They, they come with added functionality, but it also comes with the added, not vulnerabilities, but possible vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how to lock something down. It's like anything else that you got default out of the box. If you don't program it, you get what you get. And so speaking of out of the box, this class, now we haven't had it yet. I'm going to sit in it tomorrow <laughs> and the next day. Um, but what I understand is your most basic uh, point of being careful is, is what manufacturer you buy mm -hmm. from. Okay, So you have to be buying from a trusted manufacturer. Yes. Then I get the box. I open it up and I want to put a password on, right? So <laughs> <laughs> at the very beginning is the mm -hmm. password level, and then more advanced are all the things that you talked about that we're going to learn in this class. Yes. We're, we're going to, matter of fact, this class covers the legality of digital video. Most people don't realize that um, since video has gone from the old analog days to digital, technically all video falls underneath the, uh, the, the federal rules of evidence. So if you can't validate or prove that your video has, is authentic, it's not admissible in court, and the real purpose of video is to provide surveillance, to act as a deterrent, but also to provide evidence so that you can prosecute someone in a court of law. And, you know, my, 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 my daughters are 13 and 11, and they could put together a video and put it on YouTube, and it makes it look like there's real UFOs in the sky. Right. People are starting uh, to get, um, let's say, more educated to the fact that you can't always trust what you see, especially now that video production ha has become so easy. Sure. So surveillance video is going to start falling under more scrutiny according to the federal rules of evidence. And so we go through all of the federal rules of evidence that actually pertain to evidentiary pr uh, procedure with video, chain of custody, how to authenticate it. If you're going to uh, manipulate the video, you can't use the original. You have to do it on forensically created copies. So, so we basically go to a, from A to Z. So I'm looking forward to the class. And I guess the point of the matter is there's a lot of different aspects to this sphere of cybersecurity that we're in. Yes. It's not all about one particular concern or one particular threat. There's a lot of them. Um, there's a lot of ways to prevent it. And um, it starts out with being educated and working on the same plane as the IT uh, department and the, the end user that the installer is working with. Yes. And if the installer can speak intelligibly to the IT department and say, look, th these are the features we have, we supply them with a lockdown guide and a data security guidebook when they leave, plus uh, a whole plethora of white papers. Sure. 
so that after they leave class, we, we give them software tools to where they can you know, practice on lab equipment. But then when they get to a site and they can actually converse with the IT guy and say, hey, I've hung these cameras up. Do you want me to uh, shift all the HTTPS ports to this? Or do you, wanna, do you have certificates that you would like to implement? Uh, do you have a certificate authority in your, in, in your network? Uh, do you want to do an 802.1x network? Or do you just want to do authentication into the camera via cer certificates? Mm -hmm. uh, do we want to encrypt our iSCSI traffic via certificate issued by the VRM? How do you want us to implement it? I guess the other side of that is um, there needs to be education on the sales side, sales and design of yes. the system. Because by the time it gets to the installer, they're already on site putting these cameras up. But the IT department and a lot of administrators at a lot of these large organizations that we work with want to know that what's being implemented or what's being proposed is actually safe to, to operate on their, on their system. Yes. So, so the installer that comes to this event, uh, comes to this class, needs to carry that information back to his team and, or, or her team and say, look, these are the things that I learned. These are some really good uh, positive things that are going to help our proposals and really help our um, end user partners provide a, a, a more secure environment for their employees, for their corporate um, IT department, for um, legal, for all the data and information that these organizations have. Um, this, is, this is a pretty hot topic for them right now. Yeah, and I, I think we're trying to be on the bleeding edge to introduce this class. I don't think there's another one in, in, in the industry like it. Um, <clears throat> over the past couple of years, I've Spoke at a, um, spoken at a couple of different organizational events for a couple of different security organizations, and everybody seems to be screaming for it. So one of the reasons why we put this class together was is to help not only our customers, but everybody's customers, because we are truly in the midst of a cyber war right now. And um, it's, it's better to be prepared and knowledgeable about it than to just wake up one day and go, oh, um, we got hacked and they took all the credit cards off the point of sale and by the way, they got into our large chain department store via our cameras. So. Yeah, so our, our goal is to avoid that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, help our partners avoid that. Yes. And, and it really does come down to a partnership. Um, we're not just selling a widget to somebody and saying, good luck, ha have, a, have a good day. Yeah. We're providing the, the whole environment of security um, from the camera to the education. As soon as we get done doing the initial rollout, we're going to make it fit for public consumption. We're going to do a couple edits here and there, tweak it, and then it will probably go out on the um, <clears throat> Bosch Learning Management System. So if you were to go to the Bosch Security Learning Academy. Mm -hmm. The sales team out in the mm -hmm. field um, is cultivating all these relationships um, with long-term partners and with new partners. And they're really the ones that are going to be able to point the, the end user, the integrator, whoever wants to take this class in the right direction, get them signed up on the Bosch Academy, and get them into class.